Hello everyone and welcome to the MS-DOS project. Today I'll be starting a new series I'm calling Forgotten Games, where I discuss games that have gone way under the radar, especially ones on the PC in more recent times. I'll be kicking this off with a title called Toon Car The Great Race. First of all, before we look at the game, what, what the heck even is it? Information on the internet is scarce about it. Neither it nor the developer, Revistronic, have a Wikipedia page. I'd do a bit of sleuthing online to find anything about the studio, but apparently they started off developing the point-and-click adventure Three Skulls of the Toltex, released in 1996. They developed several other adventure games as well as racing games, but closed down in 2011 because of bankruptcy. Prior to Toon Car, the company had released Toyland Racing in 1999, and Toon Car was a spiritual if not direct sequel to that. As far as Toon Car itself, there's pretty much zero information available online, all I found were a few gameplay videos, some very general descriptions, and eBay and Amazon listings. I was fortunate enough to be able to ask the lead developer, and Man Castillo O'Brien, a few questions about the game. When asked about their inspiration to make the game, and also their most major inspiration for making the game was the Mario Kart franchise. Previously, they had intended to develop Toyland Racing as a LEGO racing game, but the license agreement fell through, so they switched it over to a more generic combat racer and Toon Car Racing followed in its footsteps. He also said there were no major problems during development that cropped up, as most of them were solved during Toyland Racing's development, just that funding for projects was always an issue from that rep astronomy. I was super honored that he was willing to take the time to answer questions about the game, and I am grateful for the opportunity to get to hear directly from the developer of a game about its development. Toon Car released in the year 2000 in the United States and Europe for Windows PCs. Can't really get any idea of how well received it was, as there's not really any substantive reviews online. Most likely it didn't sell much and was barely noticed, as is indicated by the lack of information available online. Interestingly enough, although there is the subtitle of The Great Race, it never actually shows up anywhere I could find in the game, and the announcer even calls it Toon Car Racing. Since we've talked about the little backstory we have, let's just move right into the game. When you first start up the game, you're greeted with this launcher that gives you some options, most notably graphic options. Although the game did come out in 2000, it doesn't seem to have any compatibility or graphical issues running in Windows 10 on modern hardware, so if you manage to get a copy, you should have no problem running it. It's also set up for controls for up to 4 players. That's right, you can do 4 player split screen with this game, which is always a bonus for me. Besides the options, there's an exit and a play button. Exit just closes the launcher. Once you hit play, after a few obligatory loading screens, you're shown the main menu screen and... this guy. <laughs> WELCOME TO TOLL CAR RACING! Yep. It's this guy right here, his name is Mr. Chatty. Pops up in menus all the time, with commentary, as well as during the actual races. You can disable him in the launcher if you find him annoying, which I usually do if I'm playing for more than an hour or so. Here in the menu you'll see 5 options, which from left to right are Practice, Single Race, Championship, License, and Multiplayer. Practice is fairly straightforward. You can choose any track that you've unlocked and race with no AI opponents for as many laps as you choose. Single race is the same but with other racers. Championship is like a Grand Prix. We'll get back to that in a second. Licenses are interesting because there are three of them, and each puts you on a track requires you to knock down a certain number of cones and finish three laps in a certain amount of time. They are required to unlock new championships as well as new tracks. They're all very challenging, requiring multiple attempts to learn and beat. Once you successfully complete a license, you need to beat three championships to unlock the next one. There are points, time trial, and elimination championships. Points is like Mario Kart where you get a certain number of points after each race based on your placing. Time trial takes your total time from all the races and adds it up to determine the winner. And elimination is similar to points, except the racer in last place at the end of each lap is eliminated from that race. Multiplayer is interesting because there's both online play as well as split screen multiplayer. I'll talk more about this when I get to gameplay. Regardless of which game option you choose, you'll eventually get into choosing a track, a character, and a card. There's only two tracks available at the start of the game, but as you complete more licenses and championships, more will be unlocked. Every track you can choose between 3, 5, 7, and 9 laps, as well as a reverse mode which flips the track entirely and you race it backwards. When choosing carts and characters, the character roster really is just a mishmash of random characters, but there is one character who starred in other games, Fenimore Fillimore, who ironically is who I've always played as even when I played this game as a kid. According to Hernan Castillo Brian, the rest of the characters were just developed based off of different cultures, with dress and sound effects to go along with it. 
Although it isn't obvious from the selection screen, the car you choose does make a difference, especially during the licenses. As best I can tell, the slowest cars are 1 star, faster 2 stars, and fastest are 3 stars. In a normal race, it doesn't seem to be super important, because it appears that all AI opponents choose a car at least in the same class as yours. Once you actually get into a race, you'll see the graphics, and honestly, they stand up really well for a game from 2000. The game is able to run at 1080p natively, and the cartoony look honestly helps it look much more timeless. I also think that a lot of these stages look really cool, especially the moon and this almost Mars looking stage. Of course, the most important part of any racing game is the gameplay, and the racing controls tend to handle very smoothly. There very few moments when I felt like the controls were making me lose races. The game follows the Mario Kart formula almost to the T, including item boxes. The items themselves are very familiar, with rockets standing in for shells, landmines for bananas, etc. One cool element that differentiates Toon Car from Mario Kart is a lot of destructible track parts. Anything from arches to trees to giant solar panels can be blown up and have its pieces scattered on the track as the race goes on, which I think is super cool. As far as AI is concerned, it always seems very fair. The rubber banding is minimal and worse. <laughs> Who's laughing now? <laughs> and especially on the earlier championships, it's very possible to gain a big lead and be able to keep it. They never seem to spam you unfairly with items or things like that, and I never felt like they were given an unfair advantage over me. Besides the standard races, the multiplayer mode adds an arena mode to the mix, which is similar to license mode in that it has you knocking down cones, except for in an arena type setting. In the multiplayer arena, however, you have a limited amount of time to knock down as many as possible. It's pretty fun, but I find the races to be more fun in general. For some reason with only two players, it doesn't seem to fit the screen properly in 1080p, but it does with four players, so I'm not sure what's up. I didn't get to test the online play, but because it's all peer-to-peer -peer based, it should still work completely fine. My only gripe has to do with the licenses. I mentioned previously how tough they were, and I wasn't joking. The first license I got no problem in two or three tries, but I really got hung up on the second one. I was stuck trying it for about an hour and a half, every time having about 10 seconds too few to finish the race. Eventually I went and watched one of the few YouTube videos of a long play of the game and realized that I was using a car that just wasn't fast enough. Once I switched cars I was able to beat it, but I just gave up on the third license. I wouldn't have had as much of a problem with it if they weren't required, but in order to be able to race more than two tracks, you'd need to finish licenses and to get all the tracks you have to beat all three of them. Maybe I just suck, but I think the licenses could have used a little more leeway to make it less frustrating to unlock all the tracks. Another interesting part of the game is the music. It's not horrible, but it's not fantastic either. I don't know, there's probably about five or six different tracks, but just take a listen for yourself. Overall, I would say that not only is Toon Car a competent Mario Kart clone, it's a very good one. The gameplay is smooth, the items are fun, and everything works together very well. I would recommend this game to anyone who can get a hold of a copy, especially for people looking for a good PC couch multiplayer game. As far as I'm aware, it's only available on disc, but I encourage you to play this one any way that you can. I'd like to thank you all so much for watching this video and continuing to support the channel. Most of all, I want to especially thank Hernan Castillo Bryan for taking the time to answer my questions about the game. He's now a senior graphics programmer over at Creative Assembly, and is super courteous to give some background information on the game. I would encourage you to check out the games he has worked on since. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope you all have a great rest of your week.